Guys, as we've learned, Alabama has the most overcrowded prison system in the nation. Nearly 25,000 prisoners housed in a system designed for nearly half that number. Tonight we take our story here to Montgomery where we look into the politics of a specific prison reform bill that the legislature is seeking to pass. We'll be forced to do it. We don't want to be forced by the federal government to do anything. Prisons in Alabama face federal government takeover if major changes aren't soon made. Extreme violence, overcrowding, and understaffing has left Governor Bentley with the imminent need to transform the prison system. He hired Jeff Dunn as commissioner of corrections a year and a half ago. Dunn crafted and refined a plan which he hopes to execute as soon as possible. To me, there's really no other option. Uh, the average age of our facilities is approximately 40 years old. Uh, Draper Prison in Elmore County has been operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week since 1939. Draper is one of 16 state prisons standing. The plan will be to close 14 of those, leaving only two of the current prisons operating, building three larger male prisons and one female prison for a total of six medium and maximum security prisons dispersed evenly throughout the state. The cost of this project for an already cash-strapped state does not come cheap. $800 million, measuring up to the second largest bond issue in state history. We're not asking the legislature or the taxpayers to, uh, to give us any new revenue. The initiative may actually save the state money down the road. We're essentially managing 16 large cities with 16 of our maximum and medium correctional facilities spread throughout the state of Alabama. If we can build these new four facilities and consolidate our operations, we're going to be able to pay for that bond over a 30-year period by through our operational and personnel uh, savings. This plan would bring prison capacity down from 190% to 125% by adding 3,000 new beds and plans to take staffing close to 100%. Right now, prisons are only staffed at 65%. The efficiencies that occur with the new prisons, uh, the, the, the fact that we have uh, surveillance that we can use, uh, uh, video surveillance, and, and we have actual locks on doors, which we don't in many of the prisons right now. For Dunn, building new prisons is a no-brainer. We have got to do something in the department, and this is, a, in my judgment, a viable option. It's a feasible idea, and so we ought to go after it with everything we got. Advocates for former prisoners say to solve our prison crisis, the state also needs to look at keeping people out from behind bars. If you want to design four new prisons as a means to resolve issues that's been built upon decades and decades and decades, you know, with the dilapidation and all that, I understand that we need new builds. But what I don't understand is adding more beds. So if we got an overcrowded situation, you don't tackle or uh, 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 solve that overcrowded situation by adding more beds. You resolve it by locking less people up, not adding more room for people to get locked up. Overcrowding has already led to riots and accusations of neglect and corruption. Commissioner Dunn says it's time to close the door on this chapter of Alabama history. I can't point to it on a time and space, but at some point, something potentially, uh, I, I don't want to say, something really, really bad is going to happen. Should nothing be done, Alabama Governor Robert Bentley can almost promise more overcrowding and violence in our prison system. Now, optimistically speaking, Bentley says, should this bill go through, we could be solving a problem for the state of Alabama for the next 30 to 50 years, taking a system from worst in the nation to the best. I'm in Montgomery, Madeline Hackett, WTVY, your hometown news leader.